current therapies for this discogenic pain um, include uh, medications, NSAIDs, opioids, limited activity, uh, spinal rehabilitation, physical therapy works well. Some of the McKenzie exercises actually help to try to facilitate some of the nutrients entering back into the disc itself. However, that is quite difficult, but it does work some. Interventional pain management, um, facet blocks as have been spoken of, epidurals, uh, rhizotomies, all these play a role and also can be helpful. And lastly, spinal surgery, and I've talked to a number of neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons, and of course, as a last resort, most of them don't, at least the ones I've talked to, don't even want to do it because the sex rate, success rate is not particularly high, but sometimes it is the last resort. Part of what I do in my office is that um, I do non-surgical decompression. Now, the reason, one of the reasons I did is that, personally speaking, I have two hernia discs in my neck and I have one in my low back. Uh, as I was introduced, I do have a history of being a professional athlete and playing four years in the NFL, and running into too many people led to two herniations, spinal nerve root compression, I have retrolithiasis in my low back, and so I really wanted to find some alternative ways to try to live with the pain that I was having and possibly get out of pain. So one of the things I looked into was What's going on at the disc itself? What is the problem? Is there any way to use this, quote, osteopathic concept that we call helping the body heal itself or creating an environment for the body to heal? Is there any way we could do that when you look at the disc? Given that the pathology at the disc is related to these proteolytic glycans and related to the loss of the nutrients, is there any way to get those nutrients back into the disc? And I wanted to see if I could find something that might do that, particularly for myself. I mean, patients would come too in some time, but particularly just to get myself out of pain. So this non-decompression is a non-invasive procedure designed to target the underlying pathology, which means the lack of nutrients that are in the disc itself, the, the infamous black disc that we see. Is there any way to get those back to the nice uh, fluid field, hydrated disc that we see on normal MRIs. And also, if we were able to do that, that actually potentially could create an environment for healing. For instance, can the annular tear heal, heal given there's no specific way to get nutrients to it? Uh, as I said earlier, there is one part of the disc that is innervated by a vascular pry, and that's vascular supply, and that's only on the periphery. So anything other than one on the posterior periphery, there will be no blood supply to help it heal. So the rest of the tears in the disc need another way to get those nutrients diffused through the bone to the, po through the posterior and inferior, and sorry, and superior portions of the disc so some healing can take place. And realistically speaking, when we talk about this osteopathic thought and model, again, with manipulations, with the concept, the way we approach patients, the objective actually is to create an environment for the body to heal. There are many units out there now that do this. The one I use in the office is called the spine med. And basically what it does is it non-surgically decompresses the disc. The goals of this particular treatment is to distract, create some room to allow the disc to move, and then to passively track, retract itself. That reduces the intrathecal pressure, allowing possible retraction of the uh, disc off the spinal nerve or off of the um, spinal cord. And another thing is an attempt to do with this passive retraction and distraction is to try to increase the nutrients actually that gets into the disc. So possibly some healing can occur. Can occur. And this attempt to promote this healing will pr also promote the regeneration of those proteolytic glycans and possibly uh, actually have the disc completely heal. Uh, I have seen there's also, I have seen and there is an attempt to retract the nuclear material off the disc and actually have a case, a case study where it actually has done it quite well. One of the things that studies have shown is that traction is attempt to do this for a long time. Just basically taking the low back or the cervical spine and just retracting it. 
and distracting it and pulling it. However, studies show that there is a natural mechanism that we have that causes the back to go into contraction. And when it goes into contraction and spasm, it actually increases the intrathecal pressure, the interdisc pressure, which actually is, 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 is going against what we're trying to do. So the traction itself is very rarely able to bypass that particular mechanism that the body has to defend itself. Here's a study that shows that with disc pressure doing traction, and if you can see here, that at the end of the study it said that the back muscle contraction, the disc pressure will increase. And we're actually trying to cause a decrease to cause healing. So what's the ways to work around that? Is there's a biofeedback mechanism in some of these units. What that does is this. Once the distraction is starting to occur and the muscle spasmed, which is our natural reflex, starts to, to go into play, it actually passively retracts it to bypass that mechanism. So every time it distracts and we naturally work against it, it retracts and so it actually milks the nutrients at the disc itself and allows some of those nutrients to diffuse back through the end plate of the vertebrae into the disc itself. The objective of this particular site was to uh, to show that uh, there has been a progression in the way this is done. This is an older model which had traction and pulley units and here's the newer model which I use. It actually has uh, a way in the computers and in the functioning of the unit itself to use the biofeedback mechanism which allows you to bypass the natural muscle spasms that happen in the back or in the cervical spine because you can also do this on the cervical spine. This chart is basically to depict that as you um, increase, let me just show the thing. as you increase the distraction tension applied here, you actually change and decrease the pressure actually in the disc itself, and that's done here on all three of these. This is an example of somebody who was treated with this decompression, and we're talking about millimeter changes. You can see that this is the disc prior to the treatment and this is the disc after the treatment. Now you can see it on, if the casual observer were to look at that they would say okay there's a little bit of a change there but when you're talking about millimeters and compression of the spinal cord or millimeters and compression of a nerve actually it makes a significant difference in whether somebody's having radicular symptoms or not. There have been some research done on this on some rabbit spine models and the research led to significant increase in disc thickness signs of tissue regeneration, disc uh, apoptotic death cells in the annulus is decreased, and this cell death here is actually kind of a scheduled cell death that we have in our body. And what happens is, is that this type of treatment actually decreases the natural dying of these cells, which allows them to stick around and get more nutrients and heal better. There's also an increase in the protein expressing cells, and those are the protein proteolytic like clans that I spoke of earlier where they have a core protein base high, and they're high, highly glycosylated with the chondroitin and the keratin uh, parts of it. There's been a lot of clinical research on uh, decompression. Uh, you can see some of the re research here. Most of these have been our retrospective studies. 71% uh, of the 778 uh, Patients treated here had a decrease in their pain scale. 86% of 219 patients demonstrated uh, success on the osteoarthritis pain scale. 91% of 14 patients, 50 to 100% reduction in 19 of 23 patients, and 20 of 27 patients. In general, the research has shown that about 86% of the people that try this actually get reduction in their pain, increase in their function.